हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद योर टॉपिक एंड दैट टॉपिक इज कॉस्ट ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल द कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल इज द मिनिमम रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑफ अर्निंग और द कट ऑफ रेट ऑफ कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर एंड द कॉस्ट ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर्स कम्स अंडर द हेड ऑफ कॉम्पिटेशन ऑफ कॉस्ट ऑफ स्पेसिफिक सोर्सेज ऑफ फाइनेंस द मेजर सोर्सेज ऑफ फाइनेंस ऑफ कंपनीज आर अ कंपनी में गेट फाइनेंसिंग फ्रॉम बेसिकली टू सोर्सेज वेर द फर्स्ट वन इज डेट and the another one is equity so whenever an investor invests his money in a company in the way of debt financing like in the case of debentures so they have a certain kind of expectation attached with this kind of investment and the kind of the expectation which the debenture holders have can be termed as fixed rate of interest and the company has legal binding to pay that fixed rate of interest to the debenture holders likewise an equity investor which we also call as the equity shareholders they also have a certain kind of expectation attached to the kind of investment they are making in an organization and these expectations may be termed as the dividends moreover the payments of the dividends is not a legal binding for the company but the investors of equity also have a expectation of earning a fixed rate of dividends every year and for the company earning that particular amount of profit so that he can fulfill the expectation of debenture holders and the equity shareholders becomes the cost of financing for a firm so the cost of equity is the maximum rate of return that the company must earn on equity financed portion of its investment so that the market price of the stock should remain unchanged but the cost of equity is not the out of the pocket cost of using equity capital as the equity shareholders are not paid dividends at a fixed rate every year moreover payments of dividend is not a legal binding but it does not show that the equity share capital is cost free because the equity shareholder invests money in equity shares on the expectation of getting dividends and the company must earn this minimum rate so that the market price of the shares must remain unchanged the cost of equity shares can be computed by two ways where the number one is dividend yield method and we often call it as dividend price ratio method and the second one is dividend yield plus growth in dividend method now let us discuss the first method to calculate the cost of equity which is dividend yield method the basic assumption underlying this methods are that the investors give prime importance to the dividends and risk in the firm remains unchanged this method does not seems to consider growth in the dividend it also does not considers future earning or retained earnings it even does not take into consideration the capital gains so according to this method the cost of equity capital is the discount rate that equates the present value of expected future dividends per share with the net proceeds of the share now let us simplify it by using the timeline so according to this approach the person is getting equal amount of dividends every year up till n number of years we can also write it as d1 d2 d3 and dn we wish to calculate the present value of each of the inflows for which we need a cut off rate and here the cut off rate will be the cost of equity but till now we are unaware about the cost of equity therefore i am writing it as k e where k stands for cost and e for equity so by using the formula of time value of money the present value of each of the inflows of dividend will be d1 i'm discounting it with the cut off rate that is the cost of equity which can be written as ke raised to power 1 that is we are bringing it back to time 0 plus d2 upon same cost of equity raised to power 2 and this continues throughout the life of a firm in a simplified way it can also be written as d upon ke is equals to p 
which gives us the value that is ke is equals to d upon p we often write it as cost of equities is equals to dividends which is denoted as d divided by np where np stands for net proceeds but this method of computing cost of equity capital is suitable only when the company has stable earnings and stable dividend policy over a period of time now moving towards the second method which is dividend yield plus growth method in this method the dividends of a firm are expected to grow at a constant rate let us suppose that the constant rate of growth is denoted as g we can easily find out the cost of equity by using the timeline let us suppose in the current year that is at the time 0 the investor is earning the dividends i'm denoting it as d 0 since we have expected that the dividends tends to grow at a constant rate that is g we can easily write it as that in the first year the investor is going to earn dividends that is d0 multiplied by 1 plus g because the dividends are growing at a constant rate like within the second year the dividends will further grow by the same rate and if we are denoting this first year dividends as d1 which means that d1 is equals to d0 into 1 plus g then we can easily write it as that in the second year the person is going to earn d1 into 1 plus g amount of dividends which can also be written as d0 into 1 plus g twice likewise in the nth year the investor is going to earn the dividends of d0 into 1 plus g raised to power n now using the formula of present value of money we can easily calculate the present value of each of the inflows of dividends which can be written as present value is equals to first year dividends that is d0 into 1 plus g that is growth rate we need to discount each of the cash flows with a cut off rate and that cut off rate may be written as the cost of equities but till now we are unaware about the value of cost of equity therefore i'm writing it as ke so i'm discounting each of the cash flows with 1 plus ke raised to power 1 for the first year likewise in the second year and likewise for the respective number of years by using the formula of apgp series of mathematics we can easily write down the series as d0 into 1 plus g divided by ke minus g and this is equals to p from this we can find out the value of ke which can be written as this so the formula of cost of equity by using the dividend yield plus growth method will become ke that is cost of equity is equals to this Thank you.